What's up guys, in this tutorial I'm going to be explaining what events do in Roblox Studio, what they are, how they work, all those different things. But first off, I want to insert a part just by clicking on this part button right up here, and we're going to be using this part inside of our scripting. So let's just go over to server script service, open this up, and then grab our script here and open that up as well. So first off, let's create a variable for our part inside of our workspace. I'm going to say local part equals to game dot workspace dot part because since our part right here is a child of workspace, we can easily access that part by simply putting it inside this variable like that and assigning the part to the part variable. So now let's create a function right here. I'm going to name it on touch just like this with parentheses. Let's go forward a line just like this. So now we have a function right here. We always talked about signaling or calling of functions a while ago in our function tutorial. We can do that just by calling our onTouch function like this. However, this doesn't really make sense because we're calling our onTouch function, but nothing's getting touched at all. We're just calling it out of nowhere. That's why we use events. One of the most common events for a part inside of Roblox Studio is the touched event. And how we use it is by using part dot touched with a capital T right here. You'll notice it's an event if it has a little lightning bolt symbol to the left of it inside of this little block that comes up right here. And you can see over here in the description of it, it fires when a part touches another part as a result of physical movement. Which means that since we have a player that has body parts, which are made up of more parts, that means that if a player or really any other part inside of our game touches this part that we have inside of our workspace, then it's going to run our onTouch function. So this touched right here, that's the actual event itself. But in order to connect it to this function, we use a colon and then the word connect, just like this. As I was just saying, we use the connect to link an event to a function or bind it, you could say. So what happens here is that whenever our part gets touched by any part inside of our game, we're going to connect parentheses right here and we can put our onTouch function right here. So basically, we're just going to signal or call this function right up here, which is perfect. And by the way, you don't put parentheses on the end of your onTouch inside of these other parentheses right here. It's just the name of your function right here, just like that. And inside of this function, I'm just going to write print part touch exclamation point, just like this. Now, let's go ahead and click on play and touch our part. So you can see inside of our output, since our part was touched by the base plate right here, you can see that it printed out the part touched print statement that we had right there. So let's go ahead and touch our part and you can see that it's printing out multiple times by the little X22 right here. And you can see just every time we touch this part, you'll notice that it does it a lot of times because a lot of our potty parts are touching it. We have both feet and then our lower legs here and maybe our upper legs sometimes. So every part that touches, each individual part that touches this part right here is going to call that function. Some fun things that we can do with this is that if we click on the anchor button right up here or just turn on anchored inside of the properties of your part, and then we move this up inside of the air like this. If we go back into our script, instead of writing print part touched, actually we'll keep that there, but we can say part dot anchored will be equal to false. So now if we play it, you can see that if we were to go over and touch this part, it is now unanchored. Now that's great and all, but I never explained what an event actually is. So events are kind of like triggers, which is pretty cool because you think about it, whenever this part gets touched, we can do anything we want to to that part or even anything else inside of the game. If we wanted to say even anchored equals to false, we can do that too. We don't have to just affect this part right here. We can just do any part that we want to or really anything inside of our game. It's kind of like when it's dinner time and you have a dinner bell, right? You ring that dinner bell and a lot of the time your family, whoever you're eating with is most likely going to come to dinner. It's that same exact thing. It's basically cause and effect. We have a cause right here and then our function is the effect taking place. 
Now, I want to tell you guys something that will help a lot when learning different events, because Touched is not the only event that we use inside of Roblox Studio. Let's go up to the View tab right here and open up the Object Browser. When you open up the Object Browser, you're going to see a lot of stuff and it can be overwhelming at first. I'm going to kind of walk you through it. Now, a lot of these things over here on the left are all instances and some of them are services. Some of them are different things. We haven't really gotten to services or stuff like that yet, but a lot of these are instances. So if we just scroll down till we find the part, it should, all of this is alphabetically ordered. So it should be in the P section and we can see the part right here. So when you click on this, you're going to see all of these pink rectangles right here. And these are the different functions that that instance uses. So this part right here, which is just any part in our game, we can use any of these functions, such as the clone function, the destroy function. We haven't gotten into any of these yet, but we're going to be explaining those in a different episode. If you continue to scroll down inside of here, you'll get to all the different properties of that part, which is pretty cool. And you can see and click on any of these and most of them will have a cool description for you to use and figure out how it works and why it works. Others won't, won't but that's all right. So if we scroll down even further, you can get over here to these lightning bolts. And these are all the different events that this instance has. You can see that we have the dot touched event, the touch ended event, destroying, descendant removing, all of these different things. And we can connect a function off of each of these different events or triggers inside of our game. So let's say we had a function for whenever our part gets touched and then a function for whenever our touch gets ended, which means that the part that was touching it stopped touching that part. Let me give you an example. So let's say function leave touch. We're going to do this and this is going to print part not being touched anymore, just like this. And then we say part dot touch ended. We're going to connect our leave touch function just like this. So now if we play the game and let's look in the output right here, if we're gonna up on this part. So you can see that if we step on it, it's saying part is touched. If we step off of it, part not being touched anymore. The best way to learn how these events work is to put it into practice. Try and make something that comes to your mind using this code right here. Join the Discord server below and share your creation with others. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video just as much as I did, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.